The Station Master The Station Master at Drabesky is called Stefan Stefanich. His family name is Sheptunov. The previous summer he was engaged with a minor embarrassment. Immaterial, however it was, this embarrassment cost him an extraordinary arrangement. Due to it, he lost his new Station Master S. Cap and his confidence in mankind. In the late spring, train number 8 would pass his station at 2.40 in the first part of the day, the most badly arranged time conceivable. Rather than resting, Stefan Stefanich needed to stroll all over the stage and stick around the message office until morning. Each mid-year Alutov, his colleague, would leave to get hitched, and poor Sheptunov needed to hold the fortification all alone. Destiny had given him a cruel blow, yet few out of every odd evening was exhausting. Once in a while Maria Ilinishna, the bailiff Kutsapietov's better half, would come over from the adjoining domain and visit him at the station. She was not especially youthful, or especially lovely, but rather gentleman. Let's be honest. Around evening time you can confuse a support point with a police officer, or as the colloquialism goes, buoy, tlom, similar to hunger, doth not a best mate make. So anything will do. Whenever Madame Kutsapietov came to the station, Sheptunov would take her by the arm, move down the stage, and head for the cargo vehicles. There by the vehicles, hanging tight for train number eight, he would start declaiming promises, and keep it up right to the second, the train whistle blew. One fine night, he was remaining by the vehicles with Maria Ilinishna, sitting tight for the train. The cloudless sky was peaceful, and the moon sparkled gently, projecting its beams on the station, the field, the unlimited spread. Surrounding them hushed up, tranquil. Sheptunov held his arm around Maria's midsection and was quiet. She also was quiet. Both remained in some sort of sweet light, calm like the moon, neglected. What astonishing climate, Sheptunov would moan from time to time. You're not cold, are you? Instead of replying, she would cuddle up increasingly close to his uniform. At 2.20 in the first part of the day, the station master checked out the clock and said, The train will be coming any moment. Come on, Maria. We should look at the tracks. Whoever sees the train lights first will be the one whose adoration is more grounded. Let's watch. They gazed into the wide breadth. To a great extent, faint lights sparkled delicately along the unlimited tracks. The train was not yet to be seen. Looking off into the distance, Sheptunov saw something unusual. He saw two long shadows stepping over the rails. The shadows were pushing right toward him, expanding and wider. One of the figures appeared to exude from a people body, the second from a long stick, which the figure was holding. The shadow was coming nearer. It was Wisding and Arya from Madame Ango. Try not to stroll on the rails. It is taboo, Sheptunov yelled. Get off the tracks. Don't structure me about you, pig, the response returned. Insulted, Sheptunov surged forward, yet Maria Ilinishna got his coattail. For the well-being of God, Stepa, she murmured. It's my significant other, Nazark. She had scarcely articulated the words when Kutsapyatov showed up before the dazed station master. The shocked station master shouted out, slammed his head into something metallic, and burred under a vehicle. He squirmed free from it on his gut and ran along the option to proceed. Hopping across the ties, staggering over the rails, he ran toward the water tower like a canine with a metal can attached to its tail. That SD, that stick he's conveying, he thought as he blasted. At the water tower he halted to slow down and rest, however he heard strides behind him. He thought back and saw the quick shadow of a man with the shadow of a stick. Hysterical, he ran on. Stand by a moment. Stop! He heard Kutsapietov's voice behind him. Stop! Keep an eye out! The train! Sheptonov looked forward and saw the train with its terrifying, searing eyes. His hair remained on end. His beating heart abruptly froze. Assembling everything that is in him, he hopped into the haziness. For around four seconds he flew through the air, and afterward fell on something hard and skewed, and started moving down, grabbing at burdocks. I'm on the bank, he thought. Indeed, it doesn't make any difference. Better a protected idiot moving down a dike than an aristocrat beaten beat up by a boar. An enormous weighty boot ventured into a puddle by his right ear. He felt two hands nudging his back. Is that you? He heard Kutsapyatov's voice. Is that you, Stefan Stefanich? Show kindness, Sheptonov groaned. What's up with you, my dear individual? 
Would could it be that terrified you? It's me, Kutsapyatov. Try not to let me know you didn't remember me. I pursued you as quick as possible. I even called out. My dear individual, that train nearly ran over you. Whenever Maria saw you run like that, she also was seized with trepidation and swooned on the stage. Perhaps my calling you a pig scared you. Kindly don't be outraged. I thought you were a railroad laborer. Don't deride me. On the off chance that you are hanging around for retaliation, go on. I'm in your grasp. Sheptunov groaned. Beat me, disfigure me. My dear individual, what's going on with you? I came here to discuss something. I pursued you to talk business. Kutsapyatov was quiet for a couple of moments, and afterward continued. It's a significant matter. My Maria let me know that you like a touch of hanky-panky with her. To the extent that that goes, it's fine by me. With regards to these issues, I for one don't care a whole lot. Yet assuming we take a gander at the circumstance good all around, I would be respected if you could be prepared to come to some kind of an accommodation with me. All things considered, I am her better half, the top of the family, you could say. Legitimately talking. Whenever Prince Mikhail Dmitrich was hanky-pankying with her, he would slip me two twenty-fivers per month. What amount could you settle for? A genuine man's statement is great as gold. However kindly, get up. Sheptunov stood up. Broken, tarnished, he hauled himself up the dike. How much would you settle for? Kutsapietov rehashed. I was considering just requesting a twenty-fiver, since I needed to check whether you could have a little position accessible for my nephew. In a surprise, Sheptunov staggered aimlessly to the station and hurled himself on the bed. Whenever he woke up the following morning, his cap and one of his shoulder lashes were absent. Right up till the present time he is embarrassed. The End